You are now listening to FMB Radio. Radio. Tate's. Tate's Coconut Chewy Crisp Chips Cookies. Ahoy. Chewy Chips Ahoy. Jimmy Dodgers. Jimmy Dodgers. Oh, f- Hobnobs. Uh, digestives with chocolate. Um, um, Jaffa Cakes. Jaffa Cakes? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Jaffa Cake. I, I mean, I don't know why I'm in, like struggling to even think of a store bought cookie that's American. Other uh, than Lorna Dune. Okay, I do love Lorna Dune. <laughs> Matt, she is definitely American. She is. <laughs> <laughs> Lorna Dune. Even Lorna. though she sounds Irish. She can be Irish. She can be, she's Irish. American. County Cork. <laughs> Who are you? I love your cookies. Oh, my name's Lorna Dune. <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? How you doing, Lorna? How you doing? Uh, Lorna. Lorna. La Lorna. Lorna. She's you, like she's like a, a nun. She is a nun. She was like, just all I have is this butter and wasn't that that James Wan movie, La Lorna? James Wan. I don't know. He's the Robert, guy that don't did. Don't out culture me right now. <laughs> Constantly. James Wan was the guy that did the Annabelle movies, the conjuring, like all those really crazy um. I don't think I've like seen a single films. one. Oh, oh really that's good. why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm terrified of horror films. <laughs> terrified. I, I, you don't even want to know. My mind, inside my mind is so fucked up. It doesn't need any suggestions. You know all the good ones, though. All no. the lines from The Exorcist. <laughs> no, I don't even. Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs, I do know. That's yeah. the only one that I'm like, okay, it's the right amount of suspense and horror. You know, I don't like a lot of gore. I like I can a get, thriller. Yeah, a thriller I you can, can do get down with. Anything from Finch or yeah. David. Lynch. Lynch. Lo- Lynch and Finch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go down and down. You see that Finch. new Lynch and Finch film? <laughs> I did love Twin Peaks. Oh, uh, I've I love never Twin seen Peaks. it. Really? Yeah. I mm. waited on the waiter once. I'm sorry. The wait- <laughs> you waited on a waiter? <laughs> I waited on the guy, who, Matt, McDonald, McDonough. Who's the lead character? What's his, what's his name? Kyle. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's really nice. He's so handsome. Mm. Back in the day, he was very yeah. handsome. Yeah. He, what other movie was he in that was more like a 90s children's classic where he played a villain? And I want to say... Was he Jafar? <laughs> in Return of Jafar. That yeah, classic yeah, Return sequel. of Jafar. Jafar was just a gay man who was just looking for some good a good time. He's back. <laughs> He's back. Jafar's like, I want your lamp. <laughs> and it's like, only gay men are looking for lamps. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, I want to talk to the genie, you know? Yeah. <laughs> he knew the genie was packing. He did. Yeah. It was like, yeah, he was, he was hip to that drive. Return of <laughs> no, he was, Kyle, he played someone. This is, I don't want to use, I try not to use my phone for these no, things. No, no, it's I'm okay. Like, Copy kill like Sigourney Weaver. That's a, that was a good mm, one. Yeah, that was. I mean, wow, Sigourney Weaver. Sigour- she's having a comeback. She, I know. She never, she never really went away. No, she's. She was in the cabin, something cabin in the woods with like one of the Hemsworths. It's Chris. Yeah, yeah. Well, she like it's plot twist. So I won't tell you what, what she does in that movie. But oh, it's a scary one. So you she wouldn't. Yeah, yeah. It. You wouldn't. You never see it anyway. It's too scary. <laughs> it's, it is too scary. Jeremy tries to get me to watch scary movies, and it's just a uh, foof. I get really scared, but. It's, uh, the moment I, the first jump scare comes on, you're like, turn it off. Yeah, I am. I'm like, you know what? You can spend the rest of the night standing out in the front yard, making sure no one tries to kill me. And welcome to F&B Radio. My name is Lindsay Collins, and I am your host. Uh, I want to just first and foremost welcome, first and foremost, first and foremost, welcome Robert Pratt to the show. Robert, welcome, welcome back. Welcome back. In, in person. That's what I mean, because sometimes it's like we talked on the phone, and that is its own beautiful special episode, but I'm like, it's so much better when you're... Like right here, and I can see your eyes. You that's know? right. That's right. And we know that we're actually not matching. No, sadly, <laughs> I wasn't. We were kind of matching, but it got hot in here. I get nerve. I get the spicy pits, so I had to put on a little t-shirt. But you know, spicy you look pits. stunning. You're all in black. Chili pits. <laughs> got the chili pits. Oh, they're chilly. <laughs> I wish they were more chilly. chilly. Honestly, um, welcome to the show. Thank you. Welcome so much. to South Carolina. Well, I love. I I've never been here in the winter. I love it here in the winter. <laughs> wow, it's like game changer. It feels livable. <laughs> in the summer, it's really not livable. It's kind of like um, it's something to endure. What was it, it feels- like in New York when you left? I was trying to get a feel for the temperature. Based on your Instagram stories on the way to the airport. <laughs> you know, honestly, yeah, I, I walk from my house to the airport. That's, wow. that's, that's the only way these days. Yeah. You ever want to make it somewhere on time? You just better walk. You just better take life into your own hands. That's right. <laughs> exactly. A few of the wheels blew out on my, uh, my, on my, 
<laughs> on my carry on. Um, but it's fine. I just dragged it the rest of the way here. Um, scuff, scuff. Um, but yeah, it's, it's basically the same temperature. It's just oh. more overcast. The, I can actually see the blue sky here, whereas in New York, it's just pure gray. Just a little smog. Yeah, a yeah. Smog, it, a little smoggy. smoggy. Do people say that? I feel like people stopped saying smog in the 90s. They were just like... I feel like there's like a belt. Like somewhere in the middle of the country, they stopped saying smog around Wichita or... Yeah, somewhere like that. And then everything west of Wichita is... That was smog. Smog. So much smog. And then like the closer you get to Los Angeles, they use it a lot. That's like very much in the vernacular of Los Angeles. I guess I'm just really bi-coastal. Yes. I guess that's what that means. Um, Robert is here for the weekend. You, If you've been listening to this show for any amount of time, you not only know that Robert is here for the weekend, but he's in Rip City, which we just talked to Maureen Henry on the phone, and they said, how many were pre-sold? How many tickets were pre-sold? We are at... Guys, 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 guys. Okay, here's the thing. We're at 98 pre-sale tickets. Oh we are trying to break a 100. Now, in the 10 minutes that I had DM'd Nameless Numberhead, it was 95. And then when we spoke to Mari on the phone, it was 98. So, so the climbing. numbers are climbing. Just climb. Just straight to the top. I think it is. It, I was talking to Mari and she was saying it's a Rip City record. I mean, we're, never before. We're going to break records. <clears throat> never before has it been over 100 pre-sold. I think they've had over 100 people total, but never like out of the gate, like before we even open the doors. Yeah. And if it's pre-sale numbers at 100, <sighs> oh I can God. only imagine how many are going to be out the door. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. Um, if you don't know what Rip City is, Rip City is an experimental comedy show, sketch comedy, put on monthly by our friends Maureen Henry of Nameless Numberhead. And you can go to namelessnumberheadcomedy.com to get a ticket. I don't know if they're going to cap them, but I do know there is, at some point, there is limited space. But I don't know at what number. So yeah, go, I would suggest maybe you know do do like a like a theater show. Arrive a little early, yeah. get a little beverage, yeah. relax, unwind, feel a little bit loose. Make sure you give yourself enough time to go to the bathroom, wash your hands, yes, say hi to your neighbors, absolutely. Get to, you know, because you're going to be laughing together. Go ahead and locate the exits. That's something That's I like right. to do. <laughs> Plain rules. Plain rules. Exactly. Yeah. Locate the exits. I like to find the exits, just like just in case. Yeah. Know where the you peanuts know? are. Absolutely. Yeah. Find your Biscoff know, cookies. Know where the closest restroom is. Could be behind you. Keep in mind that it could be behind you. Could be behind you, and or if you have enough privacy, just go right there. Yeah. <laughs> That's also where is the restroom. <laughs> It is, it is more of a picnic table vibe. So, it, you know, that's fine too. Yeah. Maybe bring a little seat cushion. I, oh. We'd love to see a full setup. Who, I would love to see like yeah. a camper. Yeah. Award goes to the person with the best setup. Yeah. Oh, like a tailgate <laughs> situation. Yes. Wow. That's a great idea. Yeah. Bring your own BYOG, your own growler, because <laughs> it is at lo-fi. That's true. You could just like fill it up. Wow, Robert, you're so pro at this. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll, I'll plug your show for you. Thank you so much. You're like, wow, this is amazing. Um, Yeah, so it's going to be a great time. It's tomorrow, Saturday, January 28th, 8 o'clock. So, yeah, 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock is the show start. Yeah, 8 o'clock. I think you can arrive <clears> around <throat> You can arrive around 7. You can arrive whenever. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get there early. You can get blasted at 5 <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> you can stand on the side She's of the She's like, street. I was at the show, don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> you could just get ripped, you know, right off the right off the rip. Um, but it's going to be a really good time. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty stacked cast, but the crown jewel is obviously Robert. So it's it's really cool that you're here, that you're staying with us. Oh my that god, you're bringing your amazing um, and truly hilarious talents to. And now's a good time to plug actually your channel. If you haven't channel. been following, I think a couple people from F and B Radio have followed along. That's very kind of all of you. Shay Shay Robert. Shay Shay Robert, like C H E Z. If you're from Charleston, you might be familiar with Shay New. Mm -hmm. But so that that similar spelling or Shay Panice or mm -hmm. whatever. But Shay Shay Robert, because Shay Robert was <laughs> taken. Oh, um, Shay underscore Robert was taken. Shay dot. Robert was taken. Shea so. Robert 69 taken. <laughs> yeah. X, X, <laughs> Shea Robert, X, X, Zenga diary. Shea Robert, hot girl, 49 <laughs> also taken. It's frustrating. Hot, hot male, hot, hot male summer. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the phys physical say, form. The I'm now, talking about the now defunct email <laughs> postage. Yeah. It's M A M A I L. Um, yeah, no, you've been doing some really hilarious and I've made several of the things 
that you've put in your video. So they're Thank very inspiring, you. delicious. I made this, I made salsa verde. Although I need you to give me a tutorial because my ratios were off. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's some some of the things are they're the more simple they are, the easier they are to really kind of. I I actually am going to be releasing a video this weekend about a, a recipe. <laughs> butchered <laughs> i just butchered it was like this it's basically like this cheese flatbread from liguria it's called focaccia di recco and it it was a wreck it, it, it was, oh it was, oh my god there's like I, I might even like try and post the one where like i'm like almost in tears like my unemployment hasn't come in and i'm like uh, you know i'm just like i'm ruined wow, it's emotional yeah and i and it, there was a lot of stress and pressure around um and i feel like it's good to also show people what doesn't yeah. work Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like you need, like, if I if I'm always funny and if I'm always like Handsome, so so, g- thank you, sexy, <laughs> seductive, and seductive, and, and everyone's like, where'd you get your lips? I'm like, they're <laughs> actually real. <laughs> stop, standard. stop talking about them. Uh, <laughs> Enough. <laughs> no, but um, I think it's good for people to see. Like, I don't mind sharing the stuff that just doesn't work. What didn't work about it? I want to watch the video, but also it's not it, out yet. So. It's. I adjusted the recipe. I split it down. I, I, I scaled it down, but I think like the dough is like really hydrated and you need to work it in a bowl first. It's, it's like one of these, it's one of these doughs that's super lean that only has water and olive oil and salt. And you're supposed to like it, there's no leavening in it whatsoever. So it's, you need it to be like mm. lavash cracker state almost. And you need to stretch it really thin. So you have to develop the gluten like really hard. You'll see if you turn into the video, you'll see, I start scraping it. I start <laughs> scraping it on, a, on my steel <laughs> counter, just like it's like mastic or something oh, like, wow. like I'm making candy. It, I knew it was bad then, but I just committed. You just kept going. Yeah. That's so. all you can do, though. And I think you're right. It is important to show that things don't work because I had I made a similar, not a mistake. It wasn't even my mistake. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I made a recipe. I've been following Nick Cartola's mm. recipes because I'm a big fan of the Four Horsemen. And I mostly just wanted that celery salad recipe, which I got and nailed it. And it's perfect. So I was like, oh, my God, that was so good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this one. And it was this cabbage and burrata in salsa verde. And it just wasn't good. It just, I made it not good. I know I'm not saying that their recipe isn't good or that that dish isn't good, but what I made was not good. Yeah, and yeah. so it was like, it's, it's humbling. It happens every now and then. And it is a good reminder to just be like, not everything you make is going to be fucking delicious. Right. Like, it's not. And to be fair though, I, I actually know exactly what it was. It's like mentally I was not present for that thing. And that a lot of times is what it is because you you develop this intuitive ability like you and I, I guarantee you, like if you were just like, I know what this thing is, I know how to produce it and I need to just intuitively let myself enjoy the process. But sometimes when there's hype or anticipation around it, or for instance, this focaccia thing that I was making, it, it was, it was more so like, I'm just trying to squeeze one more thing in before mm-hmm. I come here, you know? Mm-hmm. And I was like, big mistake. That's so funny that you say that because I made an omelet and it had all the makings of like a delicious omelet and I know how to make an omelet. Like yeah. eggs are kind of my thing. Like I love they making are thing. eggs. I make them really well. I'm like, I, I'm aware of how to do it, but how I felt in my head when I was making this particular omelet, like something really unfortunate happened with a client that I have in the middle, like right as I was starting to saute the vegetables that were going to go inside. And it was like my, my stress and my uh, like vitriol for this person got put into this omelet. You know what I mean? Like your mental the state. The transfer happened. Absolutely transfer. And the opposite is true too. If you're like thinking about someone or like really care about what you're doing, it's totally different. But the transfer is real. Yeah. And I sometimes forget that because it can be like, I'm sure it's like this for anybody who does something uh, often, but you're like, why? what happened that day? Why didn't it work? You know, and it, it, it really is your mental state. Or if you're just the intention behind it is to just squeeze it in rather than like making something yeah. because you want to. I think if you, I think if you make something, it was, it's on my like vision board of things to make this year. Cause I just love how crispy Where and did you hot. have it. I had it at Catonia in San Francisco and they have a mm. pan. They have a pan from Liguria that ha- has these divots in it 
that's f- you know it's meant for this just this one thing. It lo- almost looks like a paella pan, honestly. Oh whoa! But smaller, like a little smaller version of that, and it's like super thin. It's it's two doughs, and in between you would use like crescenza or stracchino cheese, like just something really soft and melty. But honestly, like. I didn't rest it for the full two hours, you know, like I was like, I was hustling, you know, and it's like in between the resting, I'm packing to come to Charleston. It's like, if you don't, if you can't do it with the adequate amount, like, I don't know. It's like, I, I needed to make that mistake though, in order to realize that I can't keep rushing because it, everything is, everything's affected. Like, I'm sure, I'm sure like I, and also like that day, like, I was like feeling like really aggro on the train, you know? Mm-hmm. And like, I was just like so upset and it took like a full two hours to come down from that. Isn't that interesting? Cause I was thinking about that when I had that happen with that omelet where I was like, this is so weird how you can taste how much I don't care about this, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, or like I don't have the space right now to care about what yeah. I'm making. And even Jeremy was like, wow, this is terrible. And like, he's never critical in the, of anything I make. But I was like, I said it first. I was like, it's shit, but you can have, you know, here it is if you want it. I'm, I'm abandoning it. Like I wouldn't even eat another bite. Like I just had to walk away. But I'm like, do you ever think that in a restaurant setting that the same may be true that like the recipe can be so dialed, but what yeah. if the cook or the person who's executing that dish is like having a shit day, which is totally possible. <laughs> I think there's like certain finesse steps that get missed, you know, like whether it's something needs to be sifted or something. Cause like even, even if everything's weighed out, there's like, there's like small things that people do in the course of a step of a recipe that allow for the process to be this really gentle and like thing that's very present and aware. And if you're just not paying attention to every single step and you sort of, like flop through it. Like the, the cake that that I put out a cake video today for an olive oil cake and you really kind of need to make like a sabillon. So you need to like make sure that those eggs are really light and fluffy with the Mm. sugar. And even though the directions that were given to me were like, Oh, you can just, you can kind of just throw it all together. There's something about being really intentional about making sure that you emulsify the olive oil into that egg mixture properly before you start adding the dry ingredients and making sure that the crumb is really fine or pretty consistent on the breadcrumbs as an example. And it's like the end product, the mouth feels better. The the taste is more sound. You, you care for it in a different way. Mm -hmm. You know, like even if you were to like gram, 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 method, 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 but you're not like putting in like a bit of care into it or so, uh, uh, like some sense of joy from the fact right. that it's going to go to somebody, even if it's for yourself, you know? And yeah. a lot of times if, if you're just sort of, if, if food feels of like obligatory, I mean like there were so many times that someone would make something out of a request for someone that was coming in at a restaurant I was working at and they, they'd be like, Oh, they don't like it. And it's like, you know, like I would love to see a review where someone's like, I could just taste the resentment. <laughs> you mean, oh, you mean like they asked for something special that wasn't on the menu and then it was made for them and then they didn't like it because you could tell, you can yeah. feel that the chef didn't want to make it. Exactly. Or yeah, you can really sense that like it was not on a priority. Yeah. A hundred percent. No, yeah. then there, uh, one example comes to mind where they were like, they wanted to make this, uh, this guy came in and was like, so and so always makes me a coddled egg, and you're like, <laughs> okay, sir, it's a hundred degrees outside, and he like wanted a coddled egg, and like it's a really rich dish, and like just nothing was in season that was going to go along with it. The the chef made it anyway and did the best that he could with it, but you could tell it wasn't like truly just kind of like I'm just doing what they s- told me to do. This isn't yeah. something that came to me, and I don't, I don't, I don't feel this. I don't want this for this person. You know what I mean? In not in a mean way, or not in a like trying to not give them what they want, but it's like the things that need to happen to make this available to you just aren't even available. So it's, it's just weird how that, and then they resent you for it and you're like, great. Or in this case, I resented myself cause I was like the omelet. I, now I don't have a breakfast and then my day just continued to get worse. Cause then right, I didn't eat right. because I was so angry at this omelet. I just had more coffee and like something sugary and was like, fuck everything. And it just kept going. Yeah. It was a real, it was a hard, it's a hard It lesson. escalates. It makes, it makes everything. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa let's, 
either let's remake the omelet fresh, Mm -hmm. you know, like let's start over or we just got to take, we got to take a hard pause. We have to like completely detour this whole thing. (laughs) No, it's so true. It it can get out of hand really quick. Um, But no, I'm so excited to hear because one of my favorite things to do with you is go to the grocery store. Um, (laughs) We always have a really good time at the grocery store. I'm very excited to do that. We're going to make some food on Sunday. Um, We have Rip City tomorrow. That's right. There's so many things that are that are going to be fun about this weekend, but mostly I'm just excited to have you in my home and on Thank the show you. and around Thank and you. getting to introduce you to some of um, some new friends. Yeah, the yeah. amazing people that are going to be a part of the show. I think it's going to be a really really good time. And if you've never uh, come to a Rip City, it's a it's a good one to come to. There's going to be a lot of a lot of fun things happening. Um, so definitely check it out for. Sure. What's one thing that, um, what did we do this morning? Oh, we went to Welton's tiny bake shop. Yeah. <clears throat> Fantastic. It was really good. Yeah. It was such a display. What I, the, the thing that I commented on was I was really surprised at, um, you know, sometimes when you go to places that are bake centric or bread centric, um, their thing is just pastry, you know, mm-hmm. you can see the same mother dough, Yes. And it just sort of like gets, it's like, okay, now this one's with cream cheese. You're like, let's put a different hat on this one. <laughs> and basically, like, exactly. Dress you get it up. fedora, yeah. you get bowler hat, <laughs> you get baseball cap, and you get beanie. <laughs> <laughs> but they're all some version of the same thing. Exactly. And this was not that at all. Not at all. You can, there's different technique, there's different. Um, like fermentation periods. Yeah, no, I it was... didn't think I would say that, but you know, <laughs> like, I can tell you guys are doing different hours on the clock. <laughs> I can tell you guys are just really mixing it up with your periods, which is great. <laughs> this is an eight hour dough. <laughs> um, no, it was fantastic. Um, I had not gotten it. I'm, uh, I love those guys and I hadn't gotten a chance to see the shop yet, but it's only open Friday, Saturday and Sunday, but. Oh, it, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. So wow. I was excited that I was like, wait, I don't think they're open this morning. And then I realized what day it was. And so then we could go, but it was awesome. Um, and so I'm just excited to kind of like, I don't know, we, you and I always try to not plan things and then things end up working out really well. I, that yeah. happened last no, time you were no here. No plans are the best plans. It is because then you can just kind of make a game time decision and do whatever feels fun for you. So we're going to, we're going to do a couple of different things. There's the show tonight at head high, um, that I'm really excited about. Um, so we're going to go to that and then get some dinner. Yeah. The show's called wherever low country for old men, which, you know, I love, Oh my God, I love a pun and I love that movie, even though it's scary. Honestly, I was thinking about picking up a, Picking up a special wig just for that. Uh, the one that <laughs> yes. um, I, I always want to say his name is Benicio del Toro, no. but it's not. No. What's no. his name? Oh my God. Oh, he, I Penelope love him. Cruz's yes. husband. Yeah. This is going to drive me insane because I, oh, oh, it was just on the tip of my tongue. Hold on. Um, he was in Vicky Cristina Barcelona. Yes. Um, he's his, so hot to me. Like he's yeah. one of the most attractive. Not Benicio minty. del Toro. I mean, like we can <clears> just go through <throat> Pedro no. Pascal. Um, no, it's. <laughs> no. Not that one. Antonio Banderas. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Damn um, it. Gerard Butler. No. no. <laughs> Gerard Butler, but more Spanish, I think. Ugh, um, it's driving me insane. Uh, no, but anywho, you ever see... Okay, so on Netflix, when they had No Country for Old Men on there, the show description was, man finds money and then is tormented by a man with bad haircut. No! That <laughs> was like, the description? Yes, well, that was... Like was, a AI, on, was AI writing the descriptions? Probably, probably, yeah. It, it, like, that man was when... Man finds <laughs> money? With bad haircut. And then... Yes. Haunted right. by a man with bad haircut. Oh, my God. Javier Bardem. Thank you. Ooh, you get the yes, prize. Yes. Oh, I was like right on the tip of my tongue. Also, like, Javier that is, Bardem. I will never sleep with a man who has a haircut like that. No. No. Uh, no. I I mean, I don't even know anyone with a haircut like that to yeah. sleep with if I saw him. Oh, like, damn, Polly Pocket. Good. <laughs> A little pumpkin pie haircut freak. <laughs> you little pumpkin patch. Get out of here. <laughs> you were terrifying. But I mean, it was effectively scary. It was. it was. It was. It was the sicko. absence of emotion. Yeah. About his haircut. It yeah. was like he felt nothing about looking like that. Imagine what he'd do to you. Oh my you God. Know? His backstory gets his own movie. <laughs> I used to have feelings until I got this haircut. <laughs> <laughs> to cut your hair like this. He was like a happy boy. <laughs> The happiest boy in the world gets his hair He's like, I'm going to get an air pressure thing and just start blowing holes in people's heads. 
<laughs> and playing playing riddles and coin games. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that's when he lost all his feelings i mean the backstory is it it tracks yeah honestly was he a headhunter basically mm-hmm. i don't even i think he was just he just it just was angry about that haircut yeah i wonder if that was just like a coen brothers choice they're like let's just let's just they're like we need to laugh about something about this movie he's yeah. got to have a bad haircut yeah like otherwise people will just shit themselves it's so scary <laughs> It's so scary. But you did see it, right? I did see it. Okay, yeah. Okay. Jeremy, we have a funny thing about that because we he always wants he's like, Oh, this is I love this movie. And then we'll put it on and then he instantly goes to sleep and then I'm just terrified the whole time. So he I don't think he's ever actually seen the movie because he just <laughs> falls asleep and then we start the cycle over. But it's about every five years we'll try to put it on and I'm like, No thanks. <laughs> no thanks. Um no, what else is what else is left to do on this Friday? I'm like, I feel like we got to go wig shopping. We're gonna go Mari's, wig shopping. Mari and Henry have an entire room. This is not a not a joke in their home that's just filled with wigs and costumes. So, yeah. I'll I'll like Moira Rose if you're anyone's a Shit's Creek fan. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh my God, yeah. Yeah, it's tre- they all they're all named Daphne, <laughs> <Yeah>. Persephone, <laughs> Chloe. Linda, <laughs> I, I just love the way she speaks. Oh my Linda. god, I won't say I won't say the obvious ones, but I do talk like her occasionally. Um, if I don't have a good rapport, um, if I'm serving with the table, I'll just be like, I'll grab that for you. <laughs> <laughs> if I if I can't find any way to connect with them whatsoever, we just we'll just go to. The- I'm positively <laughs> titillated. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, that's not a word. They're like, thanks. They're like, any opportunity to say the word breast. You're like, yeah, I mean, all all they asked for was ketchup, but <laughs> this is where we're at. Yeah. Um, what else is going on this weekend? That's so, by the way, so nice of you to say um, you like going shopping with me. I do. I we, I love it. I lo- I'm it like, very- I scour the shelves. I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like. Rain Man ish when it comes to grocery Dustin shopping. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm like mustard, <laughs> mustard, the mustard. You know, like I get very. This is not like offensive at all. I swear to you, I I wouldn't put myself out there like that. But um, I do get very much like you. Just you can you can like sort of like sniff around and you can feel what is good. And you, you have an idea sometimes when you go in, like, I want to make this. And if it's just not, you don't abort, abort, abort. You kind of like let the grocery store tell you what's happening. How many thousands of dollars to spend. That's what I do. I'm always, I had a list, but now I'm, now that's and I didn't see. I've never seen this creme fresh before, but we had to get it. <laughs> exactly, that happened to me actually. Welton's tiny bake shop, but then you paid accidentally, so that yeah. was not oh, cool. Well, you were I, like, "Fuck!" I sorry. Flung, I flung my car to her, and I was like, "You know what to do." Well, yeah, but I bought that twenty five dollar vinegar, and that was a, you know that's how I do. But what I like about going gro- and I actually now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, it's probably this way if you go grocery shopping with any other person because it is a very personal thing. But you specifically are so good at it because you always sh- find a way to like reveal something to me that I've just been overlooking the whole time. Oh, yeah. yeah you know, yeah. Like, and like, you oh, as no, well. No, no, this is the really good thing. And I think that's what people have their own like kind of blinders on when they go into the grocery store because they're used to the things that they know and trust and they're like loyal to these different products and they like them for different reasons. But you always show me something that I'm like, it's been here this whole time and I could have been like having this incredible, you know, whatever it is, olive oil, broccolini, like things that I Anything. just skip over because yeah. I'm like, Oh, I don't know. I don't, you get really in your own bubble and you don't even realize it. You think you kind of people shop sort of habitually. Yeah. Like they go in and get the same thing. So it's fun to mix it up. Cause when you bring someone else's perspective in, you're like, Oh wait, yeah, you did that for tricks. me a long time ago though. When we were living in New York city, you would be like, Oh, we're going to go to this sandwich shop. And I'd be like, oh, what, like, what is this hole? <laughs> Literally this hole in the wall. It's like called like glory holes or whatever. <laughs> it's like the sandwich appears through the hole. Yeah, you have to order it. Like you eat it through the hole. Actually. Yeah, exactly. That's part of it. You don't even One get to order. Time. It's just whatever they give you. Yeah. But when you're, when you're by Alphabet City, you, you were like, no, this is the spot. And it's so unassuming. And I was like, no, no, no. Like, whoa. I'm, you were like, cause like I'm not really a sandwich. I would never be like, let's go get a sandwich. But then I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Sandwiches. Yes. Oh my God. They're so 
they're so good. And like when you see how someone eats and like the things that provide them joy in mm-hmm. their neighborhood, exactly bodega stuff as well. You go to someone's bodega that they love. All of a sudden you're like, you find yourself in that neighborhood. You're like, Oh, I know where to go. Exactly. And you know, like what to get in there. Like it's a really, it's kind of like an insider's look into someone's brain and life and how they think about not just, not just like, Oh, let's make these ingredients for this specific dish. But like, here's what I would do if there was no, no script and no one was watching. It's kind of like, it's a, it's a very private look at someone, but you specifically are so fancy that you always <laughs> know, like, you're like, Oh no, no, this, this one is the one that you want. And so it's fun. I love doing it. That's so um, nice. Thank you. I always learn a lot when I go to the grocery store with you. Uh, so I'm excited to do that. And then obviously rip city, we were, we were talking about the different ways that we get uh, nervous. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. No, it happened. I just got nervous when I came down here. Really? Yeah. I wrote about it this morning. I was like, you have to just trust yourself. Oh, we will. Yeah, we will. But it's, 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 it's performance anxiety. It happens. Yeah. It's not to Mari. Mari doesn't have any performance anxiety ever. Mari yeah. just goes up there and let's, lets it all hang out. She just does yeah. her thing and she's such an inspiration for that because yeah. that's why she's so funny. That's, I mean, you, that's, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen it go so many ways. Like some people are just like, they just possess the stage and they just take it and they're like, they, they just, you know, they have like a grip on it. Yeah. They understand how the room works. And then there's those people that are so nervous and they're so that they just commit so hard to what they're doing in that moment. And both energies like really work. Oh yeah. And it's funny the results that you get too. No, it's so different. It's it's amazing. Because like, Mari can probably remember every single moment, but like then the anxious <laughs> person's like, what happened? Yeah. They're like, oh, it was great. You're like, I don't remember any of it. Yeah. No, and it's total blackout. And then um, you have peanut M&Ms at midnight and you, you're like, are we ordering a pizza or what? Because I'm not leaving this room. <laughs> no, I'm so excited. I cannot wait to see the show. Everything that everyone's bringing is always such a fun surprise because we don't know what the other performers are going to do. So it's not like we've rehearsed together. It's, it's really a fun experience. And if you haven't gotten a ticket, you should definitely come. Um, but we're going to actually go wig shopping. So I think we got to go. We got to go. Remember, we and can't this has stay. been such a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you for being so kind to my friend Lindsay. Oh, everybody. Thank you for being so kind to my friend Robert. If you're not following <laughs> Shay Shay Robert, <laughs> if you're not you following f Radio, <laughs> yeah. wait, how are you listening <laughs> to this? How did you get here if you're not? <laughs> I don't know. Um, but you definitely should. And yeah, let's have a blast. I'm so excited. I'm so happy you're here. We've been interrupted 25 times. I got to go make lunch for my four-year-old. We, yeah, we... He wants a I'm, tuna. He wants a whole... He wants a tuna. He has the world's <laughs> most expensive taste. Yeah. He, he wants d- a tuna conserva d- didn't, in a handmade oh, aioli. Yeah, didn't um, specify. I'm assuming he wants like a, a side of tuna. Yes, yeah, like yeah. a belly. Yeah, yeah <laughs> just a casual... A crudo. He wants a crudo. He, he is your child. He is my child. Well, let's go make him a lunch. We'll see all of you at Rip City. Um, and that's it. That's it, right? That's it. Yeah. Love you. Love you. I'm so excited you're here. Thank you. It's um, going to be a fun weekend. Oh my God. I'm, my, my dopamine levels are Through shot. The <laughs> Through the roof. And I'll see you next week. Bye, 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 bye. Pour passer de nuit à un soir, on n'enverra des cartes postales. Je laisserai un mot sur le frigo. On décidera de se faire la malle. Ta famille, les amis.